Hey everybody, welcome to the show. I'm coming to you from my garage today because I wanted to uh, do a mini review for you of the Draycast LED 800. It's a bicolor LED panel that uh, goes from tungsten to daylight, something in that range. Um, I'll put a link to the specs in the show notes. I recently purchased the light and uh, generally speaking, I'm, I'm happy with uh, the quality of the light and the, the build of the panel itself. Uh, but there are a few things that um, I don't care much for or some features that are lacking. And um, I'm going to point those out in addition to some quality control issues. Um, but um, I'm glad you joined me. and. Let's take a look, a closer look at uh, the LED panel in detail. So the panel itself is well constructed. Here it is. It's got the uh, Draycast label up at the top, a uh, V-mount for V-mount batteries. Uh, so you can operate a dual, uh, dual power. And then here's the control panel with a dual position light switch. Uh, if you put it on one, it is AC powered. And if you flip it over to two, it powers off of the uh, V-mount battery. Next, we have the uh, dual control knobs. One is a daylight adjustment and one is the tungsten adjustment. So you can dim the, dim or brighten the daylight or the tungsten in the mix that you want uh, so that you get the, the output of light and the, um, the color of light that you want. Although having it this way, if you, if you get the color that you want, you might not be able to get the output that you want. So you might, the only other way you would have of adjusting the light would be to maybe shift it uh, away from the subject. Um, <clears throat> the panel's metal, it's got a, feels like a metal back. Uh, it's got Phillips screws, an aluminum uh, frame with some pretty sturdy knobs to allow you uh, to lock it in, into position. So it's nice and stiff, but I think if you turn it while the knobs are tightened, it'll either get tighter or looser depending on which way you turn it. Um, the mount here is, let me turn it this way. The mount here is a, it's a vertical, so you can't mount it, you can't mount the panel, for example, like this, and then have more flexibility in turning it like that. So that's something to note. Here's the front of the panel. It's a nice, even brightness. Might be too bright right now, but you might be able to see it on my on my face, on my head. Um, I've also got another light here, so this isn't the only light. So yeah, that that's uh, physically what it is. Um, you also get about a 15 foot length of cable, or from the um, the plug. Uh, to the box, the AC adapter, and then to um, the light itself is about 15, 15 feet or so. I don't know if you can hear it, but that rattle out of the box came like that. The other gripe I have with the light is it doesn't go, it goes down, but not, it's not fully dimmable. It kind of turns off after a minute. After you get, when you get too low, it just kind of cuts out. So that's the tungsten. There's the blue. And you, did you see that, how it was bright and then it dimmed out? Well, if I tap on the knob in the back, like I'm doing now, it gets bright and dim. So if I want it to stay bright, I have to put some gaffer's tape or um, some uh, just some tape back there to place a little pressure on the light. And that's 
one of the reasons why I'm returning it, because returning stuff is a hassle, but I'm going to return it anyways because, like I said, when I, I want the control, I want to be able to dial in a, a, a temperature and a level independently. I don't want the level of the light to be dependent on the color temperature that I dial in. And it would be nice to have a, a, a digital reading uh, on the back of the light, even though I, it's not completely necessary, it is convenient. So that's the physical part of the light. Next we're going to look at maybe like the output and the um, color characteristics of the light, the spread and all that. And I'll compare it to the uh, aperture. So in this first test, I'm going to take my Lumu light meter, which measures uh, temperature, color temperature, and measure the output of the light at, at maximum brightness, measure the color temperature at full brightness. So I'm getting a reading of 5050K Kelvin with a magenta shift of one tenth. That's at full power. So next I'm gonna reduce the light output. You see how finicky it is? Let me turn this down. Okay, all right, so that's, that's about as low as it's gonna go. And now I get a reading of 5,000 140K with, uh, uh, once again, a one-tenth magenta shift. Next, I'm going to repeat that um, test that we did for the daylight LEDs with the uh, tungsten, uh, tungsten only, and measure the color here. So I'm getting a reading of 3090K with a one-tenth magenta shift at full power. Now I'm going to turn it down as far as it'll go. Sorry about the strobing for those of you who, out there who are sensitive to that. <clears throat> and with tungsten, with the tungsten LEDs, uh, I'm getting a 3090, so it didn't change with a one-tenth magenta shift. So consistency between the brightest and the, uh, the highest output and the lowest output of the light for the tungsten is consistent probably, I mean, I'm not verifying it, but probably throughout the, throughout the range. Whereas with the daylight lamps, uh, the, the daylight LEDs, uh, there is a bit of a temperature change. In this next test, I'm going to measure the uh, luminosity or the illuminance of the panel with the light meter. And I'm standing about three and a half feet from the panel. So I'm going to take a reading. Wrong side. So I'm getting a reading of uh, an aperture of 5.0 at 24 frames per second, which is what I'm recording right now, with, uh, with an ISO, ISO of uh, 640, which if uh, you use an X-T3, that's the, minute, that's the base um, ISO uh, for the X-T3 if you're shooting uh, F-Log. So let's turn it down to minimum and take another reading about right here. Now I'm measuring an aperture of 2.2. So that's the brightness range between the highest setting and the low setting is 
to uh, an aperture of 2.2 to an aperture of 5.0. I don't know how many stops that is. Can't, I, I don't know it off, off the top of my head, but it's maybe what, two and a half, three stops, something like that. All right, so let's do the same thing for the uh, blue light. Or the daylight, I should say. So daylight reading, we get make sure it's uh, measuring because sometimes the Lumu freezes up. So minimum on the uh, daylight reading is a an aperture of two point five. Yeah, you see that? It just it just if you if I don't put tape on it, it doesn't stay. So that's why this is going back. One of the reasons why it's going back. All right, so that's uh, appears considerably brighter. So 5.6, getting 5.6 uh, at the brightest setting. And if I turn them both to maximum, which I don't know why you would do unless you wanted that specific color temperature, I'm getting a reading of F8. And just for kicks, let's check what the color temperature is when they are both set to max. Actually, I don't have to do that. All right. So when both uh, dimmer controls are set to max, we get a color temperature of 3920K with a magenta shift of one tenth. So I wanted to show um, basically the spread on this panel. Um, you can see it's on a stand and I'm in a two car garage. And there's the garage door. Let me back up a little. So there's the garage door and you can see it's pretty evenly illuminated. And if I stand halfway between the light panel and the garage door, which is about six to eight feet, you can see the shadow it casts. So still a pretty, pretty soft shadow, even when you're a pretty good distance from <clears throat> the light. There's the light. So in this next test, I'm going to measure some of the characteristics of the Aperture 120T. This is the tungsten model. And I've got a, uh, the uh, waffle, waffle grid thing on here uh, with the diffuser. And it's about the same distance that I was with the uh, Draycast panel. So I'm going to measure the uh, light temperature. And I'm getting 3110 with uh, no uh, magenta green shift at all. So it's, it's dead accurate at 3110. And this is at 100%. I'm gonna turn it down. To, uh, it goes down to 10. And now I'm getting 3120 with a magenta shift of zero once again, 31, 3150. My garage light came on, so 3150. Let me take it up again, and it goes to 3130. So it gets actually a little warmer um, when you turn it up, when you turn up the uh, levels, on the, the brightness on it. But 20K is like nothing. Okay, so let's measure brightness. And I'll take a brightness test here. I'm getting, I'm getting an F8, aperture to F8 with the same settings as before at 100, um, plus the <clears throat> diffuser on this does dim it down so you can actually get the light brighter 
uh, or a brighter uh, output from this, uh, the Aperture 120T, or the 120D for that matter, um, if you don't use any kind of uh, light modifier. So let me turn it down to, oh, its lowest level, which is 10. Take another reading. Got to make sure it's on the right side. Now I've got uh, an aperture of 1.8. So that's a huge difference uh, in, uh, in stops. You get a lot, lot more uh, range and stops of luminosity between uh, when with the aperture 120 than you do with that light panel and I don't think that's comes as a surprise to anybody by the way all these tests and uh, this whole video actually has been done uh, with uh, the camera set to uh, one particular color temperature so I haven't changed the color temperature so you can kind of get an idea um, of the color between, say, the 120T and, and the, um, the Draycast Silk Gray. So that concludes this um, mini review. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, if you have any questions or comments, please do leave them uh, at the bottom of the video. And if you did enjoy the show, uh, please like and subscribe to my channel. And we'll see you soon.